Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at using Phoenix FD to create some liquid simulations. In this scene we have a couple of cookies that we want to cover with chocolate, and to do this we're going to create a simulator and then we're going to create some viscous liquid to uh, set that chocolate up. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the top view and create my simulator. So I'm going to go to Create Geometry, scroll down to Phoenix FD, and drag out a simulator. I wanted to encompass both of the cookies. When I go into the front view, I'm going to want to make this high enough so that it gets the end of the chocolate stick that's going to be pouring chocolate over these two cookies to make the candy bar. I'll go over here into the grid rollout in the modify panel and I can just adjust some of these values. So uh, 32, 28, this is all looking pretty good. You want to try and make sure that your grid is uh, as small as possible because that's going to, uh, to get the effect that you want because that's going to you know, speed up your simulation. Take a look here in the camera view and we have a pretty good grid setup. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is create a source. So let's go to Create, Helpers, and from the drop down we'll choose Phoenix FD. Now we could choose a regular Phoenix source, but there's also a Phoenix liquid source which is a little bit easier to set up and more geared towards liquids. So I'll drag this out in the viewport. I'm going to go over to the Modify panel. And here you can pick what you want to emit liquid from. So we'll choose add and we're going to choose our emitter, which is our little chocolate stick. And then we're going to set up some of these parameters. So I'm going to bring the discharge down to 5. This will mean it's discharging a lot less liquid than the default of 50. And if we look at this animation, we can see that um, you know it pours over and moves across this candy bar. And we want to probably taper off the amount of liquid that's coming off around 260. So let's turn on Auto Key. And we'll create a, just kind of scrub this up and down to create a key at 260 of a discharge of 5. Then we'll reduce that discharge maybe around 270 to 0. This way it'll start pouring chocolate over our candy and then as we go over it'll kind of taper off towards the end. We'll turn off Auto Key and with the simulator selected we'll go over to the Modify panel and there's one more thing we're going to want to do before we start to simulate and that's of course go to the liquids rollout and make sure that this simulator is set up to be simulating liquid. So we're just going to check Enable and that's going to set up a couple of other things for us, uh, including probably some better preview values so we can see the preview. Let's scroll up to Simulation and click on Start. So now what we should see is some liquid coming down and spraying over our candy bar. I'm going to scroll down to the preview and I might just up the uh, temp here to 1.5 so we see a little bit more of that liquid. But we can see a couple of things happening. The first thing is that uh, this liquid drops all the way down through the ground and it doesn't really stick to the candy bar or the cookie in any way so that's going to be something that we want to address. So for the first thing what we'll do is go up into the grid and we don't want it to drop through the bottom of the grid. So under boundary conditions, let's click on jammed minus, and that's going to get this to drop or not drop through the ground. And let's also bring down the cell size so we get a little bit more detail. This will slow down our simulation, uh, but we're going to need to do this incrementally so that we get better and better results. So I'm going to bring this down to maybe 0.5, and let's just simulate again. So we'll scroll to the top and click on start. Now this time you can see the liquid coming through, there's much better fidelity in uh, what's happening. We're getting a lot of splashing though and it's, it's filling uh, the bottom which is what we want. 
when the liquid goes over the cookie, um, it kind of flows over it, which is really nice, but it's not sticking in any way. And we're getting, as I said, a lot of splashes um, and a lot of different breaking in the fluid. So I'm going to click on stop and we're going to set up some options inside the liquids rollout. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just drop this sharpness down. Uh, this will allow us to have a smoother looking fluid or liquid. The next thing I'm going to do is for you know anything that's chocolate or uh, caramel or anything like that, we're going to want to bring the viscosity up. So I'm going to set this to maybe a 0.7 so we have a very viscous liquid. Whenever I'm doing liquids, I like to go to the dynamics rollout and either adjust down or completely turn off the vorticity. Vorticity is good for turbulence in the air, but for liquids, it's usually not the best if you want a very smooth flowing liquid. So with those couple of parameters set, we should start to have a better simulation. I'll click on start again, and now we can kind of start to see this flow through. When we look at it here, you can see that it's much smoother. Uh, we're not getting a lot of those different varied areas popping out. And one piece that you can see too is as it kind of drops in, we're getting this nice curvature that you want out of a viscous fluid. I'm just going to scroll down to the preview. And in here, I'm going to ask it to show the mesh. Now you can see we definitely have some breaking apart of this liquid and that's not something we want but that's something that a lower grid size will definitely fix for us. So you can see this coming over and forming over the cookie which is something that we want. So let's stop this again and set a couple more parameters that will be important for smooth flowing chocolate. You see this doesn't really flow over the surface very well. So I'll go to simulation and stop. And we'll set a couple other parameters under the liquids rollout. We're going to do a couple things to keep this surface together. And one is we're going to check strong surface mode. The other is we're going to give this a bit of surface tension. And that's going to do, go a long way to keeping that surface together and having it not break apart. So under surface tension, we'll go in and set this to 1. Next, we really don't have enough in the way of our grid to get a good simulation out of a uh, viscous fluid like this. So let's bring this down to maybe a 0.3. That'll be close to what we're looking for. Now let's go and see our results. We'll go to simulation and start. Now you can see that this will certainly take a bit longer to stimulate because we have a lower grid size or higher of a resolution grid. But with those two options that we set, this is keeping together much, much better. So here you can see the liquid coming down and pouring over the surface. You can also see that it's reacting a little bit more like maybe caramel or something that's a bit thicker. Um, and we'd like it to smooth over the surface of the chocolate cookies a little bit better. Now to do this, we're going to go and set a couple of parameters in the dynamics. So I'm going to stop this and I'll scroll down to dynamics. Now inside dynamics, we're going to want to edit the conservation of the liquid. And we're going to want to set this to a smooth value. And that's going to allow it to smoothly cover over these cookies. So what I'm going to do is just click on that and we're going to choose smooth. Now with this smooth conservation method, we can probably reduce the quality as well for our testing. And this will speed up how fast it's going to simulate. So I'm going to click in here. We're going to set this to about 8. And we're going to want to keep the material transfer or advection to be the classic method but under steps per frame so that we are going to get a little bit better detail we're going to set this to four so we can bring down the conservation and by doing that we'll speed up and get a smoother result but what we may want to do is just up the steps per frame so that we don't get any sort of errors now we can go back and simulate again i'll choose start
Now you should be able to see the chocolate dripping down and having a nice curvature in the middle. And once it hits the cookie, it starts to bend and flow over it. We're getting some pretty nice curling, which is important when you're pouring a liquid-like chocolate over a cookie. And that's something that we really want to see, is this curling of the fluid. The other thing that'll be important is whether this is going to go over and smooth out and actually cover the cookies. So you can see here that we have some nice liquid coming down and dropping over the cookie. We're getting that nice curling that we need uh, as it drops down. And let me just go and turn on our mesh preview so we can take a look at that. So you can see that curling that happens. But it's a little bit too sticky as it hits here. And there's one more parameter that we want to get so that it does flow over better. That's going to be this non-Newtonian parameter. I'm going to go ahead and just give this a small value of 0.1. But this is going to allow the viscous fluid to flow over the surface of the cookie and spread out evenly, which is going to be important for this simulation. So you can see here, again, it's probably reacting a little bit more like a caramel type of situation in the beginning and we want it to flow over a little bit more like chocolate. We do want to get those ripples and even smaller ripples uh, in here, but we don't want it to just kind of stick to the cookie completely. We want it to flow over the surface. So now we'll go in and we'll re-simulate. I'd probably go into the grid and drop it down maybe even to two so that we can get some fine resolution and I'll click on start. So here we are after simulation and if I scrub through you can see that we get our liquid that comes over, we get some nice rippling, uh, we get this nice curvature that comes down here as well as a buildup on the edges and it's flowing over our cookies really pretty well and this is exactly what we want. So we get these nice ripples that come through and ripples as it pours over And it goes through and covers both of these cookies. We have it pour a little bit at the end. And then that's about that. Now I can go on and turn on my mesh. So I'll go into presets or preview. And I'm going to say uh, show mesh. So we can see the mesh there in the viewport. It won't be as high res as when we actually render it out. But it'll allow us to see how it flows a little bit more. You can get a little more detail as far as those ripples. And you can get an idea when you go around here. You can see those nice uh, buildups on the edges, which would be something that you would see. Just scrub through. And you can see how that works in the 3DS Max viewport. Pour over and we get some nice pooling at the bottom and everything connects. And the non-Newtonian option gives us a nice even buildup over the surface. If I pop this into PD Player, we can see a rendered result. And I'll just play this through. You can see that nice rippling that we get as it moves over and how it covers smoothly over the surface. Some nice dripping and reflections there as well. I'll just set this to 15 frames per second so that we can get a little bit of a slow motion look at it. And that's how you create pouring chocolate over a candy bar for a nice chocolate spot. I hope this helps you create pouring chocolate in your productions, whatever they may be. Thank you very much.